everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, everybody bought, well, lots of people bought these. These are the Peerless watercolors. I've already created like the little palette for mine and as you can see I definitely use some but I don't use them as much as I should. Kind of like lots of people, I have a few colors that I've used a little bit more than others. These are browns, like I've barely touched most of these colors aside from the swatch of color I put underneath. This one I dropped in a cup of coffee, so really I haven't used it, this just came off. Or a cup of water or something. I just remember doing it and I was not happy, but... Um, so I know lots of people have bought these and we all get in this hype where we buy what, you know, so-and-so has or the big names have and this, that, and the other because we want to have what they have and we want to be like they are and all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm going to use these. Um, I've never done a review on them. I've probably only done background washes with them. I've never done like a whole image with them, I don't think, or anything like that. So we're going to go through and swatch all the colors and I'm going to paint up this image from Power Poppy with them for this video. And we're just gonna kind of give them a review and see if, we, if I actually like them because I have no idea. And we'll go from there. Hopefully it'll get you guys to pull out some of your things you've bought because so-and-so has it or I have it or whoever has it and they did something great and you wanted to do it or be able to do it. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. I forgot to get a cup of water so I'm going to go get a, a jar of water so I can rinse my brush and we'll swatch all these out. Alright, so I'm going to use, I have a Princeton art brush here. This is a round number eight. And it doesn't come to a super great point, but it does awesome. I really enjoy this brush. Um, I think I bought it probably at um, the art supply store in Saskatoon. So I love this is my favorite brush are my silver black velvets. I mean, they're super pointy. And the point is a lot longer than the point on my Princeton brush. But I love this brush too. So this is the one we're going to use for swatching at least. I have, this is just a scrap of... Um, Arches 140 pound cold press watercolor paper so it's cotton it's legit watercolor paper um, I built this according to I can't think of her name I did this forever ago when these things first became popular what was that a year or two ago um, I think it was on the Ellen Hudson YouTube site YouTube channel um, I'm not sure off the top of my head but anyway so it's got um, colors on both sides with a piece of acetate in between. You could use the acetate for mixing and it's definitely good for if your sheets, if your, pa if your pieces of color aren't completely dry, you can close it and they're gonna stick together. So what the Peerless watercolors are is they are pieces of paper. Um, I have the original set and then the expansion, the bonus pack of all the different colors. But it's virtually just like a piece of fabric or like fabric paper, some type of specialty paper with pigment on it. These were originally used for tinting photos. They've actually recently come out with the original colors that they used for hair when they tinted photos. Um, I do want to pick them up. I haven't gotten them yet. Uh, they're on my list. But So this is, um, like I said, the bonus pack and the original pack. So there's a whole bunch of yellows and oranges and pinks and reds and blues and purples and browns and greens and more colors than you could ever actually need. So let's go through and swatch these all. And you guys can kind of see the full range side by side. I will talk about these a little bit. No, I'll, yeah, I'm just gonna speed it up and swatch them. Um, I'm not gonna go through the names of all the colors, or should I? I probably should, right? Yeah, okay, fine, I'll talk. So I'm just gonna zoom it in so you guys can see the colors a little bit better as we're going through them here. And then we'll talk about our verdict at the end. So the first color I'm going to swatch is Gamboge Yellow. So they are super bright and vivid. Like they're, I barely touched, I'll show you guys on the next one. But I barely touched my brush to this and like super bright and vivid. They're fantastic. So the next one is Daffodil Yellow. So I'm just going to go in and take a little tiny bit of color and swatch it out. Okay, a little bit more on that one. It could be because I'm pulling from where I've used before. So that's daffodil yellow. So what I mean, like lots of the colors are similar. Those are both kind of 
cooler yellows, I would say. They're very similar in tone. You don't need all the colors. I just like having all the colors. So this is chrome yellow. This one's way warmer, a little more orange. I'm only using a tiny bit of color. Like I can make that definitely a whole lot darker. And then the next one is marigold, 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 marigold. I'm not sure how to pronounce that yellow. That one I love. It's warm and bright and vivid and yellow. This one reads more orange. That one's definitely yellow. This one is cadmium yellow. Then we have golden yellow. Amber yellow, I love this color. Let's put a little more on there. There we go. And this one's brilliant yellow. I would say that one's my favorite so far, and that was the marigold yellow. Then on to the next page. <laughs> my book. You can definitely do these smaller. Like I've seen people do them one by one squares in their book. I'm just greedy and wanted all the papers. All the colors. This is deep yellow. Then yellow ochre. Oh, that's beautiful. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. You know what? I'm going to turn on a light so you guys can see this a little bit better. Give me a second. Okay, there. That's better. That took me a little bit to get organized. I was at yellow ochre. Uh-huh. Find myself. There we go. Carrying on. <laughs> This is called Chrome Orange. And then we have, this is Scarlet Vermilion. These are not in like rainbow order by any stretch of the imagination. When I did this, I just kind of popped them all in. You can be way more particular, which I probably should have been, but that's okay. This is called orange yellow. Then this one's called flesh tint, which is very, very red. And I don't think I would use it for flesh, but that's all right. Then I've got geranium pink, and I love this color. I've used this one quite a bit. I know I keep hitting the sides of my jar and that's probably driving some people crazy sorry and then I've got this is Jack Jack we Minot Jack we Minot Jack something or other red it's a very bright fuchsia type hot pink color and it doesn't lift so yeah it's very pretty I love it then I've got another one of my favorites, which is Ar Arbutus, 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 pink, which is more of a warm, ready pink. That one's way cooler. For a person who doesn't wear a lot of pink, I love it in my cards. Then I've got Tea Rose Pink, which would be great for like a vintage -y type card to watercolor an image. Oh yes. I'm going to do that. Not gorgeous. Gorgeous. I like all these. I like all colors, period. This one's called Alizarin Red. Which in most color, most lines is a fugitive color. But I don't have light fast ratings on these. I'm sure I could find them somewhere. This is Rose Red. Love it. Isn't that beautiful? It's so deep and dark and rich. I don't know why I don't use these more. The next one is called Blood Red. 
And it is not like bright, it's more like a dried blood red. I like it. I like them all. I keep saying that, but I do. This is called Poinsettia Red. That one's very warm. I have to go change my water right away. This is called Scarlet Lake. I'll show you guys something at the end too between these swatches and the ones in this book. I'm going to keep this piece. This one's called Royal Crimson. Jap Japonica, 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 Scarlet. I'm butchering all of these names. All of them. We're going to mess them all up. Now I've got mauve. I can do this one. This one's mauve. <laughs> and it's a very soft color. Like I can't. Even if I go in and try and pick up more pigment, it only goes so dark. Like that, that's just what there is. So. Okay, I got two browns stuck in here. I'm gonna save them for after we'll go back. Don't let me forget. <laughs> this is amethyst. That's pretty. Yes, that's pretty. And then I have Wisteria Violet. Which is another super lovely color. color. Then I'm into Robin Egg Blue. This is another one that's very light. It don't matter how much pigment I pick up, that's just how dark it is. It's a very soft, light, minty type color because I picked up a ton of pigment and then I got arctic blue and I got butterfly wing blue this is one I've used lots and this one is called turquoise blue which is actually probably why I've used it last very similar to the butterfly blue the butterfly blue I would say goes a little bit darker then I've got forget-me-not blue I guess I really like these shades because these are all very very similar and these are the ones I've used the most so And then this one's called Deep Blue. Oh, I just painted my sweater. I wonder if that'll wash out. I guess I should probably try now. One second. Oh well, not super important. That's why I don't work good clothes when I do this type of stuff. This one's called Sky Blue. I like that one. I need to use this one more. It's like in this range, but it gets way darker at its darkest point. I like that. Cobalt blue. Not a big cobalt blue fan. I have it in lots of my watercolors and I just don't use it. It's not my favorite. This one is called peacock blue. It's actually like a greeny color, see? And then I've got Chrome Green Deep. Which is like a really good basic green. Then I got Hunter's Green. And this one's Myrtle Green. I like that one. 
This is Viridian Green. This is the one I dropped in water and wasted half of it. And I love that color. Then I've got Olive Green, which is one of my favorites. I use it in lots of yellows and stuff. This kind of a color as my darkest in a yellow because it'll blend out really nice with other yellow colors for leaves and things of that nature. This one's called Grass Green. Oh, there's some brown on my brush or some orange. I'm not sure how that happened, but ignore the orange color. It's just the green. Weird. Why did it do that? That was odd. Anyway. And then onto this page, and then I'll go back to those last couple of browns as well. I've got, this is called light green. I'm not sure where that orange is coming from. I'm rinsing my brush out really, really good. Hmm. This one's called dark green. There, I think I got rid of it. And then I've got mountain green, which is really like that foggy type of a green gorgeous. Then this is their neutral tint. This is pearl gray, which is just a little more purple than the neutral tint, and I'm not sure it's going to pick up the difference on the camera, but this is a little more purpley, where this is very, very just gray. This is warm sepia. This one is called Bismarck Brown and I never get a lot of, see, I just, I don't know if there's something wrong with this piece of paper with this one or if that's just how the color is. If you guys have these, let me know, please, because, like, that's as dark as I can possibly get it. Yeah, I've, that's, that's it. Even on the swatch underneath the color, it's very, very pale. So I'm not sure if mine had an issue or if that's just how it is. This one is called Ecru, Ecru, E-C-R-U. And then I've got Burnt Umber. And now I know we're not supposed to go on the back of this because it's just like one-sided cold pressed paper, but because it's just a swatch sheet, I'm going to put the last two on the back just so I have the colors of them. And the last two colors I have here are Sepia Brown is the one. So let's turn this over and put Sepia Brown here. And then the last one is Mahogany Brown, which is like a reddish brown. Okay, so what I was going to show you is the difference now between, <laughs> between my swatches in here and my swatches on here. So let me zoom you out. Whoops, that's the wrong direction, Jesse. Wrong direction. There's my coffee. I did not dip my brush in my coffee on accident. But... If I go back to the start and you look, this was all swatched on, this is probably Canson mixed media paper, just by the feel of it. It could be the Canson, yeah, it's probably the mixed media paper. I don't suspect it's the watercolor paper. But like the marigold color, it's beautiful here, but it's way more bright and vivid here. I don't know if the camera is going to pick up the difference, but it's definitely more bright and vivid on the actual cotton paper than it is on the pulp paper. So there is a difference. So you definitely want to swatch things on what you're going to be using them on, right? Like there's a big difference here between those two. Hold that one up. 
See this one and this one? That's the same color. That's the same paint. So, so that's our swatch sheet. I'm going to get my image ready here and I'll come back and we will definitely paint this. And then I'll let you know my final thoughts. Okay, so onto the coloring part and I'm voicing this over. I forgot to record just the first little bit where I'm dropping the blue into the background. So I don't, I didn't write down all the different colors I used and things going through this. I could probably figure them out if I was to go back, but this is more about just how they paint. So as I was going through, I found that they washed out really, really nice. I could drop those darker colors or drop, drop a darker saturation in like I'm doing here along the peaks and then use a little bit of clean water and get them to blend out fairly nice into uh, back to the white of the paper as everything was going. So I really enjoyed that. I did find that they don't lift very well. So in comparison to like my Schminkies or my Daniel Smith watercolors, even Cotman's, these don't lift off the paper as well. They're definitely way more staining, which I kind of expected just based upon the fact that they were originally created to tint photographs. So I'm going through here. I have this sped up to eight times its original speed. So it's going rather fast and it's gonna to get to 18 here in a minute just for this large flower because it took quite a while. Um, I only went over these once. I dropped the darkest color into the back, into the where it would be in shadow, like underneath, and I pulled it out and faded it to light. I really liked the way it looked. I probably could have got a lot more realistic and put a lot more detail into this, but I figured it's my first time really painting an image with these, and I'm not sure how they're going to react, and I'm not sure how they're going to layer, so... We're gonna keep everything nice and simple. So I'm just going through and I'm making this whole flower this purpley color. Um, I ended up with a few harsh, like hard lines, which I'm okay with because it is watercolor, it's perfectly fine. I didn't necessarily want them, but it looks really great in the end. I do find that they, they're super vivid, but I do find that my traditional watercolors just, I enjoy them slightly more now that could be because I am doing this on um, Archie's 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and a lot of the time I film and do my card my watercolor cards on um, Fabriano Artistico 140 pound hot press watercolor paper so I do tend to paint on smoother watercolor paper more often so that could be part of the issue. So I will try this again and probably record a follow up video using hot press watercolor paper. No, I didn't block out the light there. That's weird. I usually block out the sunbeams when I'm filming videos. I'm going through and I'm adding in some of the green and I put some green around this bud here in the middle and I didn't like it. So I ended up making it pink, the same color I do the rest of the flowers in the end. And it turned out okay. You can still see a little bit of the green through it, but I'm okay with that. Oh, I did go in and block out the sun rays. I usually stop them from splashing across so I don't end up with those real bright areas, but... So I'm going through and adding the pink. All in all, these are great. And for the price point, they're fantastic. Um, I wouldn't trade like my Schminkas or my Daniel Smith or my Core watercolors or anything for them. But if you have them, you should definitely pull them out and try and play with them. Uh, the colors flow out really nice. Like I said, they don't seem to lift as well, which could be great for layering colors, layering on top of each other with different colors and getting glazes and things like that. So... We'll see what happens. I'll record another video where I do a little more detailed painting with them, hopefully in the next week or two here. And I can give you guys a bit of a follow-up, but I enjoy them. Would I repurchase them? In a heartbeat. They're fantastic. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the little mini review and swatching of all the colors for you guys. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.